Imam al-Ghazali uh, dealt with the, the, the problems of his time. So a madrasa should address the problems of the age. One of the things that Sheikh Saleh told us, we were talking, because he's, he's very expert in ilm al-kalam, and, and uh, what he talked about was the fact that many of our kalam books, uh, theology books, address issues that are dead. They, they died a long time ago, and yet we still teach these and still talk about them, and what, whereas really they're just relics of history. And, and yet we're dealing with new uh, new challenges, and we don't have ulama addressing these challenges. So we have now uh, we have uh, quantum physics, which is challenging basic assumptions about how uh, nature works. Um, for instance, quantum, some quantum physicists argue that there's, there's no contradiction in something coming out of nothing. Um, so these, these, are, these are new challenges for theologians. But if we don't know their science, we can't really uh, refute or address them. Another, uh, another uh, problem is evolution. A lot of Muslims are very confused about that issue, and so we need to address these things. So when we look, you know, my, my conclusion after, I've, I've been a Muslim 36 years. I spent a long time in the Muslim world. Uh, I was a student. Um, I'm still a student, but I was a student of some really, some of the, considered some of the greatest scholars uh, in, in, in the Muslim world at the time. And um, my conclusion about the Muslim world is the crisis that we have is a crisis of knowledge. Uh, and, and this is why Kitab al-Ilm is an appropriate book for me uh, to be encouraging people to understand because I think Imam al-Ghazali understood that too. Inna The Prophet said, I was only sent as a teacher. And so that means that the central project that he had as a Prophet was to, uh, to educate people. And, and that, that what, has, what distinguishes us from animals is our intellect. Um, this is what distinguishes us. Even the animal has a soul, according to our tradition. It has a ruh, but it doesn't have an aql, not like the human being. And so how we uh, cultivate, inculcate, and how we address the challenge of the aql and the crises of knowledge is central. Um, another aspect which is very interesting is in the Quran, the only thing that the Prophet was told to ask for increase in was ilm. Qul rabbi zidni ilma. Allah could have said, Qul rabbi zidni imana, because ziyadatul iman is good. He could have said, Qul rabbi zidni tawakkula, tawakkul is good. Qul rabbi zidni tawheeda. All these things would have been good. But he said, Qul rabbi zidni ilma, because all those other things come from knowledge. Even really iman comes from knowledge. Without iman, we don't have knowledge. Without knowledge, we don't have real iman. So um, anyway, this is the, the mission statement of our college. Um, the liberal arts in the Western tradition are what we call ulum al in the, in the Eastern tradition. The, and these are the tools of knowledge. They're what enable you to, to learn. The most important ones are uh, grammar, like nahw and sarf, and then uh, uh, mantiq, logic, and then balagha. These are the most important ones. With these, you can uh, study the Islamic sciences, and, and it'll be safer than, than uh, you know. The, so he's, um, this is a definition of a liberal arts education in the West. A true liberal arts education, by definition, equips students with tools of learning, the, the alat. Uh, uh, and then critical thinking, you know, the, the, the ability to assess information. Imam al-Ghazali said, know the truth, know men by the truth, and don't know the truth by men. And so the goal, even though we initially learn from men or women, the goal is to actually be able to analyze what you're hearing uh, with soundness. And then also uh, eloquent expression, persuasiveness in being able to articulate. The Prophet, كَانَ أَفْصَحْ مَنْ نَطَّقَ بِالضَّابِ He, he had, uh, Allah gave him the ability to speak. Even Harun, uh, when, when, when Musa was told to go to Fir'aun, he said, وَأَخِي هَارُونَ هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا You know, he can speak better than I can. So this 
accentuates the importance of eloquence and falsah and balagha. And then the, uh, the, the aim of uh, education is ihsan, is, is, is really human excellence, itqan and ihsan, in, in private, public and private life. Its object is the excellence of man. In, in other words, having an insan, you know, that akmalu ma yumkin, that is, is as complete as possible. And, and it sees the human being as an end, not a means. The, the human being himself is a, is a ghaya, what is a maqsad, the human being. He's, he's, so, so, so we don't use people. In, in, a, in modern society, humans are seen as wasail. They're seen as, 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 uh, as means to somebody else's end. Whereas in, in our tradition, the human being in and of himself is an end. He's not a means. No, he, and, the, and the purpose of that human being is to know God, whether he's a street sweeper or whether he's an executive in, in, a, in a, 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 a company. His, the purpose is that he has ma'rifah of God. And that, that is giving each human being uh, dignity, you know, real izzah. It's the izzatul al-mu'min, 